Excellent. Uh, so I'll just, um, the best way to describe the project is maybe give you a background uh, on myself and then go over the website and then we can kind of discuss it and I can maybe show you some images and uh, we can ask questions. So uh, I can't, I've been thinking about this common direction of ours for, um, I don't know, 20 or so years. And uh, I, I got my second master's degree in uh, essentially uh, instructional design learning sciences in order to design an educational institution that could bring to the masses a new, better way of living. And the idea I had in my head back then, although there are a lot of people, as you can see, kind of if you kind of scroll through all the pages on the website, you'll see there are a lot of people who have influenced this direction. But my biggest influence was Jacques Fresco and the Venus Project. Uh, that's just because of the hemisphere that I grew up in and a little bit of my background, and also because they were on the internet uh, when I was on the internet. Um, and so mm -hmm. I found them, you know, I found them pretty quickly, uh, as opposed to maybe find coming at approaching our common direction from another direction. So uh, Jacques Fresco at the time was uh, promoting uh, what he referred to as a resource based economy or an access based economy. And it's essentially a, a, a society. Um, I'll use that as the super system term as we're going through this, a super system term for how we live together on this planet, uh, a type of society. And so he referred to it as an economy, uh, but I refer to it as a society. So he called it a resource-based economy or access-based economy where basically uh, all resources globally were held in common heritage and we all globally cooperated to uh, create a better state uh, for all on the planet. And so I, uh, as you can see, this is a very kind of like high level and yet superficial description. Um, and so I uh, went and uh, my my first uh, point of call was to develop an educational institution, which is why I got the master's degree. And so uh, after the master's degree, I began developing the organizational structure for what I was going to pull in all this content content from all of these sources that basically knew about how to uh, construct and operate this new configuration of society that people have been talking about for hundreds of years and Fresco kind of like, you know, gave a lot of information about. And so I was going to, going to develop the educational institution. So I began organizing uh, the organization for the educational institution itself. And then I began looking at the content out there in order to develop the curriculum. And I found that it wasn't available. Um, so all these people who had been describing, uh, but not explaining the oper the concept of operation of a society that would work without money and without uh, the state and without various socioeconomic classes, I found as I was looking through all of the literature out there from all sources of information, uh, because my undergraduate degree was in strategic, strategic intelligence, so I learned to look at, look at all, all sources of information. I found that the content wasn't out there to conceptualize and operationalize this uh, configuration of society. There were a lot of pretty images. There's a lot of like high level descriptions, but there has been no specific standards, no socio technical standards for the concept and operation of the configuration of society, a moneyless, stateless, classless society that I refer to as a community type society. You can see on the website, which I'll share in a moment, there, there have been many other people out there that have uh, offered a high level description of a community type configuration of society, a society that doesn't separate us by the abstract concept known as money and doesn't separate separate us through coercion and power over other types of relationships. And so I 10 years ago developed began developing the socio technical standards for this alternative configuration of society. So we're, if we're in one configuration of society right now and we're encoding a specific set of concepts, we can change the encodings, change our behaviors, change the material structure and change our lifestyle. 
So uh, I began developing the content and documentation for this new configuration of society. And it took me a while to understand the four primary systems of any configuration of society, which you don't really see out there in any other literature, but you can with Oravana. So we've separated society into four fundamental systems. And if you understand those four fundamental systems, you can really intentionally design any configuration of society. So all societies are based upon standards. Every society out there, any society you look at is always based upon socio-technical standards. Uh, more technologically developed societies are based upon uh, more, techni so more technical, socio-technical standards, and less technologically developed societies are uh, based on more socio technical standards, just an emphasis on one or the other. Even indigenous people have a lot of technology and understand technology in their like context. Uh, so even there, so if we go, we can go from indigenous societies based upon their own standards, um, those aren't necessarily written down or documented. And then we move up to the kind of society we have now, and there are many different standards governing this type of society or organizing this type of society. Every business has standards. A the word policy uh, is another word for standards. Oravana clarifies and integrates a lot of information such that we begin seeing the common commonalities between information sets that have initially been separated by discipline. And uh, so we begin seeing the AKAs, the also known as between disciplines. So uh, now I'm going to introduce the website. Uh, just a little bit more about the project. The project's open source and uh, everybody's always interested in licenses, uh, specifically if you're creating an alternative configuration uh, and we're moving from the market state uh, to a different form of society where there is access prioritized over property, uh, then we need to be very clear on uh, licenses because licenses are how the market state operates to a large degree. That's another type of standard. All government documentation are standards. You have technical standards, the IEEE, the ISO. These are international standards. You have local standards, uh, codes and zoning regulations are standards. All laws are standards. Uh, so what I'm saying is, is here is we can create a different set of standards that reflect a different configuration of society, that reflect more of a community type configuration configuration of society that might be characterized as having a resource or access-based economy. And uh, so I'm going to go through the website and tell you a little bit about the license. So the license is a CCBYSA that covers both uh, the written content and the, uh, the images. Um, so all text content and all images, 2D figures are uh, licensed as Creative Commons by ShareLike. That's the only community license there is for, uh, or really not, maybe not the only, but that is the, the optimal license there is for community licensing. It's And if you're going to license, whereas you could see public domain is not a license. Uh, in public, with public domain, anybody can take the content, privatize it, and doesn't have to share it. Uh, but with um, with CCBYSA, the share alike part means that it's a true community license. Meaning, if you're going to license the content, where public domain is no license at all, if you're going to license the content, then you want it to stay in the commons because that's what we're doing. If we're transitioning to a community type configuration of society. We're moving people and resources from a, uh, a market state type configuration where there's private property and there's coercion, which you have to have when you have exclusionary access, uh, that's, you know, property, uh, into a community type configuration. So you want content that you're putting out there to stay in the community. You don't know. So that's the share alike part. So it's CCBYSA. There's the same for software code. Uh, that's also share alike. Um, so now, now I'll introduce the website. So because it's an open source project, everything should be on the website. And, you know, it mostly is on the website, uh, except for the private stuff that I work on or, you know, we work on and then we share. So in the end, everything's published on the website and anybody can use it however they like, as long as they keep that part in the, uh, in the commons and for it, everyone else to use into the future. 
Um, so I'm just going to share my screen quickly because the best way to go through this project um, is really to take you through the um, website. And where is the right there? Okay. Great. Okay. Can you see the website? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, in a community type configuration of society, we operate based upon a set of socio-technical standards that are divided by the four fundamental systems of every configuration of society that we can now know and understand and use to engineer a new configuration of society. Uh, in community, we live in um, the, the term that Oravana uses is habitat or the full technical term is habitat service system. Uh, but in that's just an AKA for settlement or city or village or town. These are all AKAs for habitat. So we use the term habitat or habitat service system. We feel it's a more technical term. It's a, if we're trying to use more technical language so that we have less confusion over time, uh, because there are habitats that have millions of people and there are habitats that have, you know, just a small number of people and they're both habitats. So we've chosen to use that term instead of some of the other terms like city, because if you say city, then I can show you a, a habitat in which which uh, is a smaller set settlement where fewer people live, and then we'll start getting into confusion. So we found that as we were creating the document, working with the information, because that's our that's who uh, we're currently talking to, people working with this information, habitats are a more technical uh, terms. So first I'll get into the standards, then I'll discuss the, the, uh, the type of habitats that people in community might live in, because they represent a ma different material environment. Then I'll discuss a little bit of about the project, we can go over what could be learned, uh, how we work, and that's it. Um, so on the first page, I just want to describe what the standards essentially describe. They describe a project that explains the concept and operation of a community of community at the planetary scale. They demonstrate the feasibility of a type of society that operates without markets and states, because we have to present something that's feasible, something that can be simulated, prototyped, and then we can safely transition to. And the project is building a community type network of integrated city systems. So we use this word city here because it's the home page and most people who are new to the project will connect with that word versus other words. So here are the standards. So I'm just going to go to access the standards. You can access them all for free. The standards are uh, in document form in um, InDesign, which is professional publishing software. They're currently published as PDFs. Uh, the next version, we also hope to have them as uh, EPUBs. Um, and all, st all these documents, we have over 2,000 uh, figures, models, figures for the standards that basically visualize everything. If you can't visualize, we say you don't understand. So everything has to be visualized. That's the primary way of uh, uh, communicating clearly to another human being is to visualize. Um, and so we have over 2,000 figures here that are associated with the standards, but can't be put in the standards because the standards in page are in page format, so they have to be separate here. Of course, you can get them from Amazon, and then we have a discussion of adoption of standards because the whole purpose of having standards is to adopt the standards. So we'll just go to the primary page. This is the primary page. You can see the organization of the standards right here. There are four primary systems that make up every configuration of society, a social system, a decision system, a material system and a lifestyle system. Now, uh, people then say, where's the governance system? Where's the economic system? And those two systems are, in fact, decision systems. So at a higher level, we call it a decision system because governance uh, is decisions about, you know, take decisions about other people's lives in many respects, that term means. And then ec economics is just decisions about the uh, allocation of uh, resources into needed goods and services. So we have those four primary systems right here of course for every configuration of society you have uh you can give a system overview an abstract or a system overview and then you have a project plan for that configuration of society um, in current configuration of society there are millions of project plans every individual has their own project plan every business has a project plan every state has a project plan uh, and then the sub states have project plans so you have hundreds of pro millions of project plans uh, and you have tons and tons of standards so anyway, we have the system overview right here. It's uh, free. You can order that one in black and white or uh, color. Um, 
I wouldn't order any of the other books, just FYI, at the moment, because the next version of the standards, which will be released later this year, uh, except for this one, which has sort of changed, have significantly changed and are three to five years more advanced, I would say, than what is currently released. They're also APA 7th Gen Citation, so they're up to university standard with their citation. They've removed, uh, like, they're essentially, all the errors have been uh, fixed, and they've also been uh, restructured in many ways, so they are very different than what you see here. So we have a project plan standard. Uh, so just so you know, if you download these, just realize that you'll get basically a good overview, except for the system overview. If you download the other ones, you'll get a good overview of what the structure might be like for the next version, which, which, which will be released uh, later this year. But I'm just saying that the documentation is, I feel ready to create workshops and begin providing education for others into how maybe we could uh, continue carry on and uh, further develop this living system and maybe begin transitioning to it. So we have the standards here uh, and you can see each standard has an identifier. This is important going forward. So these identifiers, because eventually we'll put this on a, on, um, on a chain and then we'll be able to like, um, you know, begin like developing this together on some, some, uh, some recorded chain somewhere, or digital ledger. Um, so, uh, also in the future, we'd like to have the ability to modify this on the fly. I think this is kind of like a big future thing. I, I'm sure organizations are working on this, especially standards organizations that work with standards. Having workshop working groups with a working group of people, and they use the AI to communicate amongst the working group and facilitate the resolution of decisions and facilitate the, the updating of the standards themselves. I think that might be something interesting in the future. Uh, so anyway, again, people in um, a community type society live in a uh, assist. It's not like I'm just people. So I just want to clarify the different types of societies we, we're, we're currently in. We're currently in a market state type society. That's the language we use to refer to the current configuration of society. There's a market where people have property and they trade property for access. And uh, there's accumulation of property, which certain people advantage over other people. Um, the, and then there's the, all the extrinsic factors of the market. So the, the factors that aren't cared about, like pollution and the climate and these factors that, you know, don't aren't accounted for in the market equation. Then you have the state, which uh, is necessary under market conditions. And uh, you have uh, the, the, uh, the um, production of laws. And then you have uh, the operation of police forces that enforce those laws coercively and use punishment um, to resolve conflicts and disagreements. So we're moving from that configuration of society into a configuration of society based upon another set of encodings. And so if I just go back to here, uh, but all types of societies can be looked at from a social system, like a social navigation system. They have a direction and orientation and approach. The direction in community is human need fulfillment, which uh, human needs are common and objective to all individuals. One of the things people miss, uh, and sometimes, especially when I say there's a point in downloading these documents, sometimes they do miss um, some of the additional content here, because as I said, they're, they're uh, you know, this is page format. So sometimes they miss the tables. Uh, and so when we're talking about directions, I would click project plan lists. Uh, and so here are, because all projects are separated into lists that are executed, uh, so when I talk about direction orientation approach, I'm talking about a navigation system, which is what a social system is. The orientation part is values. A lot of people like to talk about values, and then they forget needs, and other people talk about needs and forget values. And then, the, of course, the, the most important thing that they miss, then, is the methodology by which they are bringing in and integrating and analyzing new information. And then they get confused over methods and methodologies. Of course, a methodology is the selection of different methods. So that's the approach side. But here what we have is the direction side. So all, uh, all societies um, have, uh, have organisms in them and all organisms have a set of needs and uh, the direction of community is the fulfillment, the complete and sufficient cyclical fulfillment of those needs because needs uh, come in cycles. So here we have the needs list. Uh, and this is a complete list of human needs. 
Um, we in the documentation, you'll see that we have a good list of human needs. I think it's in the project execution. The next version, you can see how different the, the documentation is. It's in the social system. So in the first version uh, that's currently published, it was actually in the project execution, and it's now in the social system where it should be. And we have a complete description of what, what is human, sorry, Kevin. Uh, the human needs. The human needs. Yeah, they're currently in the project execution, I think, and in the next version, they're in the social system, and much, uh, much better. All the grammar and spelling mistakes are corrected, and we have this complete list listed there as well in the next version of the social system. So this is the complete list of human needs. These things need to be met by all humans and they need to be met optimally and they're all common and objective to every single human uh i'm not going to go over them specifically but um it's the i haven't found a better list of human needs uh this is you'll see maslow so we've gone over all of them and if you type into needs when i take you back to the figures you can see some of the uh, the needs images we've gone over so everything from power versus force model to the Anthony Robbins to the spiral dynamics to the multiple different uh, Maslow's types of human needs. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. set of uh, human needs and then you can you can measure them over here. And then we have objectives. So of course the second thing when you're creating a project is uh, you know how are you uh, how are you valuing? what are you valuing? how are you orienting? And those are all AKs for objectives value orientation and objectives are all just AKs. Um, objectives are just more applied within decisioning and values are more kind of uh, applied within the, the social system, but they're essentially just AKAs. Uh, uh, objectives are more technical terminology. So you can see the list of objectives we have here, kind of a comprehensive list. Those are also known as, oh, so they're also known as non-functional requirements. Um, so these are the non-functional, potential non-functional requirements of societies, NFRs, objectives list, all just AKs. Then you get into decision where you have the requirements list. These are incomplete. This is incomplete, of course. Um, this is incomplete. And if I take you back, this is just kind of like, you'll see more of this sort of model in the um, in the decision system. Uh, deliver all of the rest is in. If I take you back to the project list, you'll see what's sort of like complete. These two are sort of complete and uh, the rest are highly incomplete or one's just a template, which you find in the decision system. So now I'm going to take us back to- so, uh, Joyce, can I ask yeah. you a, a question? This is amazing, by the way. I think that all the work that you've been doing is is uh, amazing for humanity in general. And so, you know, uh, great, great job putting, I mean, there's a lot of, of work that you have done clearly. So. Uh, I think that's exciting, and and yeah, just to pause perhaps while uh, and we can continue. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how we can you know uh, best work because I think there are a lot of things that that we kind of like resonate. Um, I mean, we in hope to please with with the message you're sharing. Um, and I I have some questions because you know I think. Overall, what uh, we are trying to do at Hoptropolis is uh, along the lines of, of you know, um, creating space for the construction of um, what, what you are discussing here, right? A, a way to go from idea to a, a functioning city, right? Yep. And so um, I see you had kind of like these, these lists and objectives for the different systems. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, these become standards. Are the uh, standards uh, would, uh, do they include uh, the actual um, like defined approach, or are they a compilation? Say, for instance, of what you were saying right now, like again, like a checklist to kind of like um, construct your own version of habitat like is it like a you know kind of like um yeah predefined uh set of standards that are already constructed or are these standards there to help you construct your your own i think like i can configuration of 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 a Habitat, yeah. Maybe. So, yeah, I can definitely answer that question now. Whereas a couple of years, I would not have been able to answer that question. Uh, a couple of years, I would have had to say, I don't know. But now I can say, I, can, I know. So we have a set of global standards. Um, and then those global standards allow for flexibility at the local level. 
So there are global standards, just like there are now. If you're in any state at all, there are global standards. You have to follow the laws, right? Those lo and, and you should operate based upon technical standards because that's how technology safely operates. So, you know, there are laws and there are technical standards. Uh, and then there's flexibility at the local level. You can take personal choice. You can take personal, uh, uh, I mean, based upon your, you know, how much money you have right now, uh, you have options and uh, you can acquire and access things based upon the amount of money you have and based upon the laws uh, and the, and the technical technological standards that have basically uh, developed every single material thing around you uh, are based upon technological standards for your safety and for proper functioning. So what I'm saying is we can look at society differently than we do now. And sometimes it's easy to grasp this and sometimes it's not easy to grasp this. If I, if I share, um, if I share my, we have a, we have different, um, let's see, a uh, simplified overview. So what I'm saying is that there are a set of global standards that allow for localized preferential customization of habitats. So we have a set of global standards. So of course we have problems now. We have a set of global standards that will allow you to live by your own choice in a specific habitat based upon bylaws that you select those bylaws, as uh, they're currently being developed, I think there are 500 of them in the current documentation in the project uh, execution, I think. If you look in the project execution, you can find the bylaws in there. So what we're saying is that we can create a set of unified and integrated and global socio-technical standards that will allow us to live in a uh, live throughout the four phases of life, the nurturing phase, the um, the uh, uh, the education phase, the contribution or employment phase, and the leisure phase or retirement phase. These are just AKs for the different types of figure. You know, you have, in community of contribution in the market state, you have employment. In community, you have leisure. In the market state, you have retirement. Throughout all of these phases of life, uh, and you have more preference than you do now. So uh, the so so basically, there's like a global operational protocol that develops, uh, the, wherein working groups develop standards, and those standards are unified and global. And then uh, there are habitat service teams that basically facilitate the operation and materialization of habitats or cities or settlements. And then you have a set of uh, decision working groups, and those decision working groups uh, remaster plan these habitats every cycle so many years three to five years uh That's depending upon more or less what, what i wanted to to ask you and it's uh how are these standards uh you know constructed and updated and you know right. revised where necessary right so all all standards organizations are working groups so if i go to uh, about project about all standards organizations all standards are developed by working groups there's only two types of work in society in any society there's only two types of work because there's only two types of information right there's information itself concepts and then there are objects the physical environment so you have people doing information work and you have people doing work in the physical environment and which of course always includes information. So you have people developing social, socio-technical standards, and then you have people applying those socio-technical standards of which customized master plans of habitats are one version. And so uh, then you also have decision working groups. So, but decision working groups are just working with information. So you have two types of working groups, information working groups and decision working groups. And those decision working groups involve uh, people in local, ha the residents of local habitats, and uh, people who work for society as part of the contribution, as part of their contribution service, coordinating decisioning for master plans at a cyclical level, which depend upon various factors, which come down to uh, need, preference, and also the fixture of material structures in the environment like they do now. Uh, because all fixtures in the materials uh, in the material environment um, have lifespans, so we use a protocol at which 
to um, uh, derive master plans, uh, and that's a decision protocol. You can kind of see a basic structure of it in the current decision system. It's not totally complete yet, but the next version is much more complete. It, you, it's a set of parallel process inquiries uh, that resolve different solutions. Uh, you can apply this at scale, but at the habitat scale, it basically creates the solution as a master plan that then the habitat service team members, the people actually doing the physical work in the habitat, maintaining the habitat, which people do all around us on a daily basis, except now they do it only to get paid, whereas in community, it's a contribution. There is no payment for your work. Uh, you have to take on a different perspective in order to understand this. How I came to this was very simple because I came to it through intrinsic motive, through uh, the concept of intrinsic motivation, which during my, it was during my uh, master's degree that Daniel Pink became famous and, you know, intrinsic motivation and intrinsic drive. So that was a big thing in our kind of like, in my mind, as I was going through that master's degree, like trying to clarify, sorry about the noise in the background, trying to cl clarify the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. And um, that took a little while to understand and became a big part of this new system, because that's what contribution is. A society based on contribution is a society based upon people being intrinsically motivated and supported in their intrinsic motivation, even to do work for others in the material and information environment and not get paid for it. Whereas intrinsic motivation is coerce, coercion, you know, the state or money. Do you're, you're muted. Um. I've been writing down, I'm fascinated. I've been writing down a, a couple of questions as we go along, but I'm really keen that you stay on your trajectory because you obviously had a, a plan of explaining yep. to us the, the bigger picture and um, so so continue with that as well and then you know, today if we have time otherwise another time I'll revert with more questions and thoughts etc. But okay. um, I'm, I'm really enjoying your your train of thought. Oh thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll get to the so uh we we hope to be uh Oravana hopes to be like a standard setting organization. Um, of course, anybody can take these standards and, you know, do whatever they want with them because they're licensed to CCBYSA, but we hope to become like we hope to integrate these standards in some way with artificial intelligence and begin supporting decisioning and information acquisition and education and tutoring about society. We also hope to get these standards in university because we think we clarify, we unify all the information that had been separated out there, you know, so in the, in the, in the current version, but even more in the next version, we we pull in information from all of these sources and integrate it into, uni, into a unified standard that will allow us to live our, our, our life, meeting our human needs and preferences on a daily basis. So, and we do that in material environments. Um, and uh, so uh, we just like the, the circular aesthetic, but we're not saying that anybody has to live in a circular city. This is just kind of the aesthetic that we've been working on. There's no, and of course, even if, circular cities were to be placed on the environment, they wouldn't necessarily be totally circular. So this is just an aesthetic that we're currently working with. Um, yeah. And so, but there are settlements on the planet that uh, live in circular cities, the Crau in Brazil, actually, or live in circular settlements, the Crau in Brazil. So we can begin, so in community, we live in a network of these integrated city, city, city systems. There's no sprawl. And uh, the cities are integrated because that's the most efficient way of operating a material environment is to have an integrated system. And so uh, there's a perimeter set. Now, this is where the customization comes in. The residents who have agreed to bylaws in, in, this, uh, in this habitat um, and then updating the bylaws every so often, potentially. Uh, so this is the perimeter. You can update the internal environment, but you can't, uh, you can't just uh, extend the perimeter necessarily. That would be more of a, a complex topic, and I don't quite fully understand that part. But essentially, uh, that you, you, I would presume, and could be written into the agreements that uh, there's no extension of the uh, perimeter except for I don't know, except for something in the future, because then these are meant to be integrated. So as soon as you start extending things in that way, as opposed to creating another, you begin creating uh, environments that are very difficult to integrate. 
So the protocol, my presumption, because that I'm not, I'm not saying that the system's complete yet. A lot of people ask me, can we build this? And I'm saying, no, we can't build this because it's not totally complete. Um, and we don't have the decision system complete. So, uh, so I'm not like, I'm not some people out that like that are out there that are saying, Hey, we could build one of these in just like a year or two. I'm, I, there's a lot more develop that, development that needs to go into mm -hmm. this. Um, so anyway, you have a perimeter and in order, if you wanted to extend the perimeter, you would have to get the agreement of everybody in this city system and you would have to make it an integrated system. So it was integrated as it is in this version. So what we're saying is here is that you can create and you can also update current cities uh, to material configurations that represent community. So, uh, but we are creating. Is, we I, are can, I can hear you. I'm just gonna go make coffee, but I can. I sure. have my okay. wireless. So I'll just be one. It's already done. So I'll just be okay. here and so you can continue. Thank you. Uh, so we're saying that you can live in these integrated city systems and these integrated city systems are networked. And we also, as you can see, they're meant to be integrated so that we reduce all of the problems in the market state in terms of urban environments, including urban sprawl, disconnection, uh, issues with property and territory. And we also uh, allow for more wild environments. So we allow for uh, the restoration of ecological environments. Um, and so you have these integrated cities and you ha can have everything from a low density density. Uh, this is the, on the right here. This is an indigenous kind of low density. Then the next one over is the aura curve habitat that we've been working in. I'll show you next. Uh, and this is a rural restore it's a it's like a small village uh it's integrated within the total habitat network so it is connected to larger habitats so people can still travel between these habitats easily um but you are in a more rural setting and th the environment around here is a holistic cultivation so you you see a, and a holistic cultivation system I, I can show you some other models but a holistic cultivation system based travels around this network animals travel around and a 3d planted landscape travels around that's the most efficient and also a uh, biomimicked way of producing food is a 3d pasture landscape for animals and plant cultivation and uh, that also that form of cultivation is what creates a soil base so when people talk about like restoration agriculture or centropy agriculture or any of these AKAs, where they're all kind of permaculture AKA, they're basically talking about uh, this. And you have to include animals in this, otherwise you don't get the, the same uh, regeneration of the soil. And, you know, there are a lot of people who eat animals. And so that's just, you know, it's part of the natural cycle. So then we have an increase, we have a medium here, and then kind of like a low medium here. And we also talk about material environments because there are two different ways you can create material environments. You can do them more bioconstructed with organic materials, or you can do the more mineral based. So we're also showing here at the right, a more bioconstructed habitat. And then as you move to the left, they're all mineral constructed. Yeah, and the one on the far left includes a dwelling area that is bioconstructed. So you have to look at settlements in in terms of how much in, in terms of their materials and how much much of the the uh, how much of the fixed infrastructure is organic and how much of the fixed infrastructure is mineral. Oftentimes, minerals are the limiting factor in any configuration of society, um, as we're seeing now. So uh, I'm going to go to the habitats that we've kind of been working on at a high level. Um, then the first is the Travis, orca. Are these, are these ha habitats meant to be? Oh, okay, I think you're going to go into them now. Yeah, so they're meant to be interconnected. People basically li live in these configurations of habitat. Uh, uh, you know, it could be any configuration. I mean, this is just some versions. Um, this is just kind of what we chose to work with at a small level because we need to begin calculating out the economic system for the whole habitat and then the habitat network. So we were just choosing early on to to do a this small habitat at this point in time. Um, so uh, as you can see here, there are different configurations of habitat habitats, basically how you can network them in different ways. Uh, in this version over on the left here, this version that I'm highlighting, you can see my highlighting, uh, you can see that the the, the the circular white parts are the, uh, the dwelling units or the other fixed infrastructure. And then the rest of the circles are the pasture cultivation. So you have animals traveling around a 3D uh, landscape 
and uh, you have a variety of primarily uh, permanent but also annual plants. This is described in the habitat service system, uh, which is a subsystem to the material system because they had to be separated out. And so in this configuration, this is meant to be a rural restorative configuration where we're restoring restoring rural soil and providing an abundance of food, fuel, and fiber uh, for the population. Um, that's what can be produced from a uh, restorative agricultural environment, an abundance of food, fuel in the form of oils, and, and fiber, and other materials. Um, so we can get from this sort of uh, environment, we can get all of our, we expect, we need to calculate all of our food, uh, some of our fuels, and uh, some of our, all, you know, all of our organic fibers, um, as opposed to the synthetic fibers. So we have the master plan here for the, this version of the habitat. Um, I'm not going to go over this in specific. And then we have the, uh, this is an architect that is it Is it meant to be self-sustainable, Travis, like the um, habitat? So uh, self-sustaining is a very complex topic at the present point in time because, um, it, as I said, minerals uh, minerals are come from a, a global supply chain along with technology. So it's meant to be self-sustaining in terms of organic materials. Yes, but uh, you can't make it. It's impossible to make it self-sustaining in terms of minerals because of the global or technology because of the global supply chain. Um, so yeah, we, but we, food and and yes, yes. Okay. Food, uh, some fuel, uh, which would be taking uh, seed plants and taking and uh, taking out the the oil from the uh, the nuts, and then um, yeah, fibers, different fibers. Uh, yeah, we haven't calculated electricity. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so like I, you know, I would that that all would have to be calculated. Um, and it, again, would we're dealing say that, uh, Travis, would this be, let's say, standard? Because let's say how it comes across then is like the the actual configuration of, of the habitat can be different, right? Or of is course. this in, is like a standard in development where you're perhaps going to continue to add and then at some stage that would also be part of the standard? Like, is that um, uh, it's as customized as the local residents of the habitat want it to be customized, given global standards. Given so global that we standards. we're just we're just we're just creating um, we're just creating one configuration here. Uh, there are actually many configurations of this, so it would be it would be local to the population what the population chooses as they go through the decision system. So um, as they go through the decision system, they configure a master plan. Some people might live, like to live more rurally. So you can see here all the different configurations. Of, there are so many different configurations of this. Some people might look, like to live more rurally. Some people like, might, might like to live with more people or fewer people. Some people might like to live in higher density. Um, and then the aesthetics, the aesthetics that can be customized Correct. here, customized, including like food. Um, your preference for, mm -hmm. for what is cultivated here or what the demand for the network requires. And so do, do you have any particular idea in terms of like how it would come to be? Like let's say for instance, would the future residents of these habitats take part in the decision making of their local habitat before they move in? And yes. so how do you, yeah, do you, do you have that sort of part of like the, the kind of like how are people assigned into habitats or how do you kind of like um, as, yep. as a user take part in, in changing the system? Uh, yes, um, we have a lot of that. I mean, I could show you some models, um, <clears throat> but maybe maybe I should just describe it and then uh, if, if I need to clarify. So um, everybody right now we have social profiles, right? They're not really useful except for social networking. Um, in a in the future, we'll have residency profiles, and so you have a, right now you you don't kind of have to you it, unless you're living in a homeowners if you're living in a homeowners association or even apartments, you sign a, an agreement, right? You're actually signing a residency agreement. Um, even when you buy a house, you're kind of signing a contract with the local government, even though you're not writing it out. Um, mm -hmm. But in a community type configuration, that is made explicit. Uh, before moving into a habitat, you have to agree, as, or even like moving into community, you agree to commute 
community, um, a set of community bylaws, and then you agree to a set of habitat, re we call them residency agreements. Um, so yes, you agree to what you, basically the operation of that habitat. Different habitats might have different, will have different residency agreements. Uh, different sectors of different habitats might have different residency agreements. You can imagine a sector of a habitat where a dwelling sector of a habitat where none of the residents uh, have dogs. And that's because they've they're, they're in the, in the agreement uh, in the residency agreement for that dwelling sector. It says the residents in this uh, just like in apartments or what wherever. Sometimes there are agreements that you're not allowed specific pets. Perfect. This is it's how. It's funny because you know this is uh, something we have been <laughs> like, of course, you know, kind of like thinking a lot about as as, as well, you know, given <clears throat> the nature of our project. But it's it's so. Um, you know, nice to be able to have this conversation with you, Travis, because I think there are a lot of, mm. there's a lot of experimentation <clears throat> in particular that I think that needs to be done in terms of like how this is all facilitated, right? Because like, let's say for instance, we want to do this um, and even at the beginning of it, right? Where there is no um, consensus yet on what the habitat is or who is, you know, like dog lovers, Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking around how can we start to sort of like experiment with some of, of these amazing work that, that you've done, right, Travis? And I, I think uh, overall, I don't know, Jerry, uh, you, I, I guess what excites me the most in particular is uh, more or less how we can allow for a process that allows for continuous, you know, involvement of of these systems, of these, you know, uh, standards that, that you discussed, right? So, you know, uh, I, I'm i sure I, I would like to go into them. I think at some stage, maybe I don't know if it's now or in my own time, I'll actually get into the, the particular standards because I haven't actually done that yet. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we need a system to, to really try to test these proposals that we are putting together, right? So you we we kind of like have a lot of consensus in terms of how we approach this right where we we also have the concept of working groups that are based on criteria right in your case it's human needs and, and restoration of the local ecology if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. it's, it goes along we, we call it sustainable abundance in the sense of of like you know kind of like uniting both like human fulfillment human needs we were also kind of like um borrowing from maslow and, and you know the whole humanistic psychology side like you know self-determination theory and and all, all these this human needs component of it right but um yeah i guess what i'm i'm trying to get to is is um that that yeah i mean i think uh the most key part of this is having that quick uh sort of like iteration loop on it because what we've come to realize is that um, concept conceptually things might be different from practice which i'm sure you you are are you know kind of like 100 percent aware of and so uh yeah just being flexible in terms of like okay we are agreeing you know to some extent there are systems right there are subsystems and there are criteria for each of these systems and subsystems i'm not sure for how you're doing it right whereby you know all of these different things that are in this standards are are measured right and that's, <clears throat> uh, that's how i guess the the standards come to be right from some sort of like uh logical evaluation against the the criteria for the the area or, or system that you call it um sure Mm -hmm. Indicators and metrics and project planning. Yep. I mean, this yeah, is part that, of basic part of project planning. Yep. That that allow for for the continuous evolution of of those areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. More than in itself, like I I don't know. I think um, yeah, you, you've done a lot of interesting work, and it it been interesting to start to see hey you know what are what of those like what how do these ideas you know uh play out in reality like can we test 
you know, you, you mentioned, I'm, I'm also very much interested about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and how that plays out, right? And I mean, I, I do consulting on gamification and, and it, it has a lot of to do with, you know, understanding that. And in particular, also something that I've learned is the benefit of extrinsic motivation too. You know, I think that it's not as, as uh, bad as, as it's perceived to be. Uh, I think that it is a core part of every design, you know, that if you don't have some sort of like extrinsic motivators, it's very difficult sometimes to do things that are life changing, you know, like you have a lot of concepts like that could use or people that opt in for some sort of like extrinsic uh, component. And, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's just a need to experiment with, with these things, right? Um, so some of this we discuss in the in the FAQ. We have quite a big FAQ, uh, quite a large FAQ. Uh, one of the best ways to come to a, a, a better understanding of um, kind of the project as a whole is to actually go through the FAQ. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I, you know, in many ways, I agree with you. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's just whether or not what you want to encode at the societal level, you know. Uh, do you want to encode extrinsic motivation at the societal level, or do you just <clears> want it to be something that, um, you know, something that motivates people? And then how do you define extrinsic motivation? Um, and well, these are meant... Extrinsic, yeah, it, it's just such a big umbrella from, you know, just the concept of, of having, you know, to pay for a gym coach, for instance, is a sort of like extrinsic motivator for many, right? In terms of like, hey, I can't get myself to go to, to the gym. Uh, let me pay a membership in the in the gym or hire a, an instructor so hence you know i have this commitment it's it's more like a you know personal desire to say look i'm putting these money at risk right so i am motivated to to exercise right it's just like for example not as yeah. it's, it's related to money but it's not uh, i mean in itself extrinsic in the sense that i want to you know conquer the world extrinsic motivation for for my own benefit right you know what i mean it's just right. like uh there's there's a lot of uh things but that come you, tied the, that arises under market state conditions and now you're tying this person going to the gym to their total <clears throat> act because if you're integrating money this is like a directional thing if you're okay. integrating money at the societal level you know some people don't have the money to go to the gym you know some people don't have the money to do that mm. I know people in my family who don't have the money to do that. So this is kind of almost like first world problem when you begin looking at it like that. And then there's the the topic of um, uh, the topic of the difference between theory and practicality. So a lot of the standards are formed from what's working now. So people then talk about, well, how do we, you know, how do you have some great theory here? I really, you know, in some ways, if you're referring it to as a co as a uh, concept model, sure, you know, it's a theory, but it's also applying what's practically, I mean, the way the habitat service system is structured came from NASA. So, um, you know, I think, I think we need to get, get to this to the idea that we can create these standards and uh, the standards should be informed from evidence of what's working so then that whole idea of well is it theory or is it practice kind of becomes more unified and it's seen as standards uh, that are formed from evidence and we can begin using those standards to create and live in different in material environments um, some of that sort of answered the, the difference between theory and practice and the FAQ. Um, and then again, it's a directional thing if we want to include money, you know, at the societal mm -hmm. level. Uh, that's actually a direct, that's a direction. Because when you include money, you're, you're not community. But Travis, I, I mean, I feel like there, the thing is that a lot of these things haven't been tested, right? I mean, I, I think you kind of like address that point in the sense that if you actually go out there and start researching for like, examples or best practices in, in societies, you know, that uh, are, of, uh, I guess you, you cover small and, and larger communities, right? Yep. But that have <clears throat> worked in practice, they're, they're limited. And, and in that sense, I guess, there's also a lot of things that are being kind of like done, right? That would inform the standards at some stage. 
but there is a lot also of, of like potential in each area, right? I think I'm, I'm trying to get back to kind of like, how do we... Here, uh, maybe if I, I'm trying to figure out how to stop sharing my screen so I can share a different image, um, because this might clarify some things. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Tra Travis, you, I am, I'm still holding back my questions. Oh, okay. Mm. To, to what extent are, have you finished your, your overall presentation? Um, I don't want to interrupt the flow of that. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, okay. no, I've finished my presentation. For the moment yeah okay do you have any kind of concluding remarks sort of um this? yeah the, uh you just like the, an introduction sure the, now i'm waiting for the conclusion the mm -hmm. concept of community I, i'm not going to share my screen but the way com the term yeah. community is used is uh different under market state conditions versus under a community type society mm -hmm. uh, it's a category mm -hmm. difference so uh we're referring to a type of configuration of society as community that's a different <clears throat> configuration. A lot of people, it takes some time to get this because every day people use the word community here in this market state, mm -hmm. and they're not referring to what I'm referring to. They're using the word community to refer to their ethnic community, their national community, their, um, their neighborhood, their business profession, their industry. This is, this is a category mm -hmm. difference. So all of these people, who, uh, their friend community, their family community, this is not what I use. You, this is this is important and also included in the FAQ. This is different, a category difference. We're referring to a configuration of society as community, not all these sub uh, sub um, uh, sub conceptions that people like. People get that feeling of community from these other words, but they're not actually the uh, they're not actually the con the same concept we are referring to. We're saying that all those great things that people experience at their ethnic level, their national level, their, their feeling with their friends and family, we can embed those at the societal level and create that sense of feeling perpetually for everyone so that everyone lives in more flow and fulfillment. So I'm done. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very, very much. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, I'm going to loop back to the last point first. And I fully understand how community is not uh, all those other words. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it shows the challenge we're going to have. Because when you first go out to today's world with you know, the typical 30 second, even, even that attention span people have gotten down to in the age of cat videos and TikTok, um, they will grab back to the previous understanding of the word. So words, words matter, and it's hard to try and redefine the meaning of a word when there's so much momentum in the use of that word. Yes, this is the a stage. Uh, maybe well, no, but that's more to the kind of marketing side. I mean, the, the the core thing is to understand what we mean, what we want, how it's going to work, and I'm perfectly happy with using that internal terminology for that. We've also created not a lot, but we often create we have problems in our own system of words. Um, we got a fancy system. We put a D and an apostrophe before it, and then the, the word most describing that to show it's not quite that what you think it is, but it's our own redefinition of it. Like instead of having a car, we have a the car, like the apostrophe car. Or instead of having a city, we call it this city. Or you know that means that internally that's not quite what city means or car means, but we've redefined it. And at some stage later, we replace those D apostrophe words with a more marketable word. In other cases, actually become the word. So I fully understand your need to redefine some words so we can at least, as we plan this as a group, know clearly what we're speaking about. So, exactly. Yeah, I fully understand where that's coming from. But the, the actual message to get it out, to popularize, we don't even know have the whole world agree. We don't need 90% of the world to think it's cool. We get 2%, 3% to think it's really cool. That's all we need. You know, to, to get critical mass. And then when others see it working, then they can grow, etc., and become popular. Concur. But still, you've got to just define who is that potential target. And that's one of the great possibilities. In the end, you become who you attract. And we might just end up attracting the kind of people that can make this work. They're still diverse, but they have a different mindset, an open mindset to make things work. Mm. So, on a positive note, from environment crossing oceans and erecting yachts, or um, 
being in a platoon in, in military service, unfortunately, or fortunately, it was still human on a human level, very interesting experience. There are similarities where suddenly there is no money. It's like on a, on a boat crossing an ocean, even if you've got a million dollars on you, it's not going to mean nothing if you want a sandwich. Mm-hmm. And when, when there's no outside force, you suddenly, we didn't have a system of standards, but I guess we'll, I guess we'll come with our own ideas and how rules form, etc. And it suddenly makes you think how you can achieve so much more if your aims become aligned. And you know you, you pursue some kind of bigger common vision, like crossing the ocean or beating the other boats, etc. And um, when we don't create this unnecessary environment of artificial scarcity and digging potholes and others filling potholes, etc., that actually it's quite possible for minimal amount of labour, even before technology, to satisfy majority of of uh, your your group and mm-hmm. look after the young and look after the baby. And they're going right back to the old Greek time. They weren't centered around work. They had more of a leisure time, etc. But somehow we've created a system that just you know, makes everybody run a little rat race. So on the bigger philosophical view, I very much understand that. And now we're adding the new levels of technology, um, AI, robotics, fully autonomous, this and that, super, super cheap energy compared to what used to be before you know, the, the industrial revolution caused by oil, coal, etc., steam engines. It's, it's crazy that we can't supply a good standard of living for everyone. And on a more practical level, we entered the Mars City State competition sponsored by, anyway, um, well, it was quite, quite a big competition. And part of it was to say, how can you create self-sustaining communities for one million people on Mars? And it has to be from an engineering point of view, from a governance point of view, economics point of view, societal point of view. And it showed, um, putting my engineering hat on, even in those harsh conditions, even if you have to you know, melt your own water from the rocks in the ice and create your own atmosphere and your own oxygen and you know, grow everything indoor, it's possible to sustain a human civilization on a foreign, hostile planet like that. And you arrive without money. Because you know, money is not going to buy you anything else. You've got to bootstrap yourself. So afterwards, this, we won this competition for 2020. That's a very big reason, a large group of people. I was a small part of it, but it's great. Um, it then just becomes became so much more obvious that you can create a more near paradise conditions on Earth if you rearrange things in the correct way. So philosophically, I think you very much agree. Um, and dur- just to add one thing yeah. to that, sorry, just to add one thing. During transition, there might still be credit. You know, there might still be tokens. Hmm. I try not to use money, but during transition, there might still be tokens used. And uh, maybe those tokens are only used for leisure items, except for the people in the leisure phase of their life. You know, so there are, okay. so, you know, they're, they're, the, the ideal, what we hope to get to, I, I'm sure what we <coughs> will get to is the point where there are no tokens at all. But during transition, there are ways to hmm. incorporate tokens. Okay, yeah, because it's a great challenge to kind of cross that divide. All I'm saying is from a personal point of view, I really love it and I agree. It's just the, anyway, it's, it's hard to imagine how we get there. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a bit so, I don't know how your time is. I'm, I'm fairly free, but. Um, uh, like 20 more, fine. you know, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, right. So some couple of questions having said that. Just a quick, quickie. We, you, I understand you're you know, giving to the comments and open source, etc. and then people start to credit it. We also want to create value for Acropolis or maybe Aravana, Mastermind Eden, etc. That when in our group we thought of something that pe- few people have thought about in a unique, good way of doing it better, that we create patents for that. And we do that for others as well. So we call it the kind of you create, we protect system. We're making it easier for people who have brilliant ideas to create IP within our group that we then protect from Apple or Samsung or Yeah. You know, I just I just, just take that idea and run that I run totally that. get you. I, I that's totally the uh, the wrong dir- that's totally a different direction than the direction I'm going. Okay. Totally Travis, different. I don't know how far you've gotten amount. in terms of 
uh, there, I don't know how far you've gone into kind of like going uh, and explaining to Travis the structure of how property is in an organization. No, not very much. It's, uh, yeah, I'd like that, but I just have to say any discussion of uh, of privatizing uh, technology that could be used for the benefit of all. Um, that's, that's something I, for, wow. for the private profit, I just try, I just want to clarify if you could respond to what I'm saying, any kind of like privatizing yeah. of that so that, uh, specific individuals can make profit off of it, um, it is not the same direction as what I've, what I'm working toward. I think we're actually more similar than the word patent would bring about that patent resides with the community It becomes our Ravana. Of oh. masterminding any property to stop a Samsung from just taking your your idea that you've created for a, a Ford Motor Corporation and running away with the commercializing. Okay, so you you you're ba oh, basically you what you're you license it back to us. So yeah. you, it's basically a commons. Li it's like a it's like share alike license. You're essentially saying you're essentially licensing it, but saying, hey, you can't take it and privatize it. You know, none of these organizations could. But what happens if the organization says, OK, I, I you know, I'll just pay you for it. Um, you know, uh, it, so what, what type of license are you thinking? Like, do you ha have you specified? That's one. That's one thing that I've worked on a long time thinking about these licenses. Um, mm -hmm. What type of license specifically will you be licensing uh, the property as in order to keep it? I don't. I don't know what what license. What exact license? Maybe I'm not familiar with it, but I can look it up. Look, we've done the the normal patent application. U.S. patent office, you know, different country patent office, etc. Four ideas that come out of our thought process that are unique that have never been done that way before, and that then belongs to it belongs to a group of individuals. individuals. And so, Which what's the, the yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the it's, yeah. ultimate residents and and people who are part of uh, the city, right? So the shareholders mm. in the corporation is mirrors uh, the population of. of of the city at this stage of properties, it's, it's how it's set up. Okay. So technically, again, everybody owns everything, uh, right, and has a stake in all the different uh, ventures that may come out of these projects. Okay. Cool. I understand. I I get you. Okay. I think okay. that's I think that's aligned. Yeah. I think so. It seems yeah, like and it. We also I, have I things like in place to avoid can, people mm -hmm. taking control. Like we have a one percent like nobody can own more than one percent of the company including you know Jerry himself okay. and the whole post founding mm -hmm. team so i think we are very aligned in terms of like hey how can we create something that's community led in terms of like everybody has taken it right it's not for the benefit of the few right and the ultimately affordable accessible and uh, uh an opportunity for the masses right which is something that's not an uh offered or a priority for the majority of, of our new developments, right? They're kind of like going the traditional way where, you know, it's the big real estate companies that buy the space and they just sell that space at a profit, right? Which makes the property in a new city basically out of the, the reach of the majority of, of people, right? So that's why we're giving space from now, you know, to everybody who contributes and people are able to kind of like, um, yeah gain their space before the city is built and it's uh take part in in the decision system as you call it you're borrowing a little bit your your language please the, the conversation um but it's 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 interesting i mean i i think again that the a lot of the it's and pieces can come together as we try to really put this into into practice right and into um something that that can materialize into reality right like you know uh, and and I think that's what we have, right? We have an opportunity. Yeah. I haven't been as active as both of you who've been participating in the conversations of Venus Evolution. Yeah. By the way, um, I lived in Miami. I graduated from Miami, so I'm familiar with Jack Presto as well and the Venus Project, and you know, kind of like watched these documentaries when I was back back there. So I know him as well from some time. And uh, it's a the, yeah, it's it's it actually inspired me from a young age about the development as well. That's why I actually joined Pop Properties at some stage. And uh, yeah, I think the opportunity we have here is like, hey, there's a group of, of projects, right? We all have some sort of like I, our own ideas in terms of like what society could look like, could be like, how could it work? And I think 
we are more or less aligned the, around the direction, as you say, right? I think we're all pro well being and we're all pro kind of like uh, sustainability, right? And so it's, it's just more or less how can we facilitate, uh, yeah, that first uh, initial uh, decision making, right? You have, uh, we also have some sort of system for how we can decide meta um, um, standards, I guess you would refer to them, right? Laws, policies, et cetera, and, and uh, how these, uh, you know, can be also a lot for like a customization when it comes to the, the locality, right? So sub hub, hub, we kind of like have our own uh, language for all of these things, right? And uh, uh, yeah, so we have potential, I don't know if we have potential residences that the residents that we could create resident profiles on, you know? <clears throat> and this is a hypothetical, you know, uh, idea, but again, how could we facilitate, hey, what is the initial, you know, um, yeah, unified standards for this project, right? And and I think it's important that at that stage, we, at this stage, we allow for that conversation to happen, right? In terms of like, are these standards that we can adopt and we can, to some stage, you know, wherever you have, propose a particular solution, right? Uh, we can sort of like facilitate some sort of deliberation that leads to, hey, you know, a consensus between these communities in terms of like how an initial, you know, uh, yeah, project could run, right? Uh, we, I, we could show you in another day because I know we're running short on time already, uh, but we're working with Mark Klein from MIT and we're experimenting with one of his platforms that's, uh, for allowing large scale deliberation, online deliberation. Mm -hmm. It's argumentation systems mm -hmm. and it's, it's a whole platform that he's developed to allow to use surveys, right? And to be able to allow for sort of like, again, uh, deliberation on different points, right? Starting from, hey, what should our you know, decision system work like, right? And you have like, this is our Vana option. Right, you may have a uh, Venus uh, evolution points and some Venus core points because I know there are some differences between three of, of the projects, although you're all kind of like based on, on Jack Presto's idea, it's my um, understanding. I mean, I think it, it was different enough to kind of like differentiate the movement. So I think. <laughs> It's not necessarily that, that everyone doesn't have the same ideas for everything, right? So I think it is, again, it's important that we allow for that sort of like deliberation on, hey, you know, system, subsystem, you know, what is in each subsystem, right? What options do we have? And it seems like you also have a lot of experience sort of like with the working groups and the lists of actions. And, you know, I don't know if, we, yeah, I think there could be some common path where we can collaborate and create some sort of like you know facilitation process um for a first initial project that i that could be what's, what's currently being encompassed i don't know what you think there this is me just after kind of like digesting all the yeah, work that and i was still trying it. to get to my list of questions which i was holding back <laughs> go ahead jerry and i'm not really envisioning yet with the how the possible collaboration should look at data. Because mm. yeah, it's interesting with the different layers in, in the larger group, how to best integrate that. T today was really for me to learn as much as possible about Aravana, not not to propose the Antropolis side of things exclusively. Mm. Um, so yeah, my next question was really, mm. um, understand it from a bigger system, why you want this community system, et cetera. But, how would a kind of day look for for a person from an individual point of view? Mm. Specifically, a silly question. Um, let's say one person really likes bananas, another person likes steaks. How does your system decide when I get a banana or a steak at the end of the day? Especially one system costs ten one costs ten times more per calorie than another. Right. How how is it actually? How's the life experience going to be? Yeah. So uh, so that's a very good that's question. What I'm keen to understand. 
Very good question. No. Um, we have uh, in the end of the life, the current version of the lifestyle system, we have uh, two descriptions of lifestyles in community. Uh, that's kind of what the lifestyle system describes mm -hmm. to some extent. The first thing you have to know about lifestyles is they're separated into four phases. Um, I, this isn't really discussed. I mean, some people discuss it, but all, our life goes mm -hmm. through four phases, even now. It goes through the nurturing, the education, and community contribution, and then leisure. So your lifestyle will probably look different depending upon what phase you're in. Um, what you have access to might even be different because in a community type configuration, there might be leisure habitats. And uh, if you're not in the leisure phase of your life or you're not on vacation, you can't live in a leisure habitat, which, you know, for example, could be a full service habitat where, you know, you live in a dwelling and everything is full service for you versus a normal production center. So now we begin getting into economic calculation, decisioning and production. Um, so the current way things are accessed. So you have to look at how the current way things are accessed. The current way things are accessed are you have uh, big industries and states states that um, they, and a global supply chain that produces things. Um, everything's based upon supply, demand, price. Uh, there's a lot of manipulation in the system. Um, and uh, you have intermediate, you have the means of production, and then you have final production. Um, it's the similar similar state and community of the means of production. The means of production are the habitats themselves. And then you have objects and services in the habitats, which are um, which are like the basically final means of final means of final the final products and services um, here in uh, the market state you can only access what you can afford so if you don't have money to access that banana um, or you're wanting to you know a lot of people use the word tightening their belt here in the United States or you're not wanting to spend it'll be based upon price not based upon what you want again in community there aren't wants the way there are in the market state their needs and preferences and some of those needs are there's flexibility in the decision and production system so that's calculate that should be calculated into the production itself is this a uh, is this a flexible um demand that you have is this like is this going to change regularly or is this a demand that you know ahead of time and can be uh can be programmed into the cultivation system so it produces what you demand is this a seasonal food and maybe the habitat you're in or the habitat regional habitat network only provides food locally uh, have you demanded this before and it can be grown in a greenhouse versus outdoors so it, you can see the complexity behind it and how uh, the system itself hmm. currently kind of makes the decision for you in many respects versus in community where you where you uh, there's a a team, um, the decision, well, basically the decision working group, which surveys and interviews, and also you provide demand surveys. And then it's also related to, uh, is this continuous need that you have? Is this a cyclical need that you have? Is this a, dem a demand for a customization, a small customization or a major customization? Uh, how many people in your residency or your regional residency uh, have the preference for nutrition that you have and uh, can we meet that preference given our resources and available human need power within you know the next 30 days or will it take us a year to begin cultivating this food that you and a group of other people or are there not sufficient people in your habitat uh, to demand for the cultivation of this new food product so you can see the complexity behind decisioning and how often in the market state this decision is taken for you what's available at the grocery store is what's available and what you can buy is what you can buy and maybe you're trying to save money and that determines what you can buy versus a group of people who are facilitating your your preference for fulfillment as well as you inputting your preference for fulfillment that answer yeah yeah okay i understand on the, on the systems level how you can yeah. kind of aggregate saying you know this society has used uh, 100 kilograms of bananas per day before 30 kilograms of meat and we'll try and supply the similar thing we'll try and get some kind of survey feedback etc but i'm i want to know how it goes from an individual point of view if i wake up in the morning mm. is it decided for that. me whether today i eat bananas or steak no, I mean, I that would be coercion like anymore. That would be that would yeah. that would that's not. I mean, if that's not any community, how, how I would want to live choice, in. How, how does individual choice operate within this community? 
uh, through a global uh, information system in which there is a decision system and within which there is a material system customized to local preferences and needs. Yeah, I understand how it works on a, on a more macro level for a thousand people. But who decides when I become my, my leisure phase for my working phase? Uh, that's depend, that depends. Uh, on the medical it, conditions or... Yeah, no, that depends. That, it's uh, no longer a case of when I, yeah. So we we talk about that in the next version in terms of working lifetime working hours in order to provide for the complete fulfillment of the population. So right now, uh, your work is based upon how much money you want to make, um, how much the owner of the business wants to make. Um, if you have enough money to retire, some people can retire at you know. Some people never have to work. Some people have to work. So right now, uh, and you're paid based upon working hours or work. You have a salary. So in community, it's different. Uh, if we were to choose to do it in the most intelligent way, I think the choice would be the number of working hours to complete the full the the required fulfillment for the population. And it's based upon working. Sorry, working years, not working hours working years so you go through a contract so it's like a national service you perceive it differently right now it's like oh i have to go to work or i love work or i really want that money but in community it would be like hey i'm going to after edu after your education phase which is the same as now you go to university and then you go to work it's kind of the same um you then instead of going to uh going to get a salary you go into contribution service which is coordinated and which is based upon the projects that need to be completed in order to meet the requirements of the population and we can be calculating out the number of years it might take that year figure is like the optimal we might only be able to do it early on in terms of months but it should be done in years the number of years taken to uh required to meet the going strategically going it sustainable because this is this is a sustainability concept you know sustainability if you look at like meadows and a lot of these other people who define sustainability they don't actually define sustainability so far the way we've been defining it in this conversation um sustainability is an objective mm -hmm. of course you can read it on the objectives but sustainability also means to meet the needs of future generations so the sustainability yeah. is a complex concept and so if you're going to meet the needs of future generations you need to do it in years and um so we can you know we can begin calculating that you can begin calculating that out and simulating that oh and so the lifetime what it looks like so yeah no there's no coercion or choice i mean if there's coercion or choice that's not any society that i've designed or would want to live in where you wake up and only what's available for you is what some centralized government or state or coercive power has like budgeted and provided you with. That's not the system that I've designed at all. That's the exact opposite of the system. And uh, so then depending upon what phase in your life, uh, there's, you know, there's also flow. So if you look in the lifestyle system, uh, the lifestyle system is separated into two primary. I've only been talking two primary sections. The only section I've so far been talking about is uh, the the life phase. But the other part of the lifestyle system is the experience. I'm losing you, Travis. I don't know if it's me. Experience yeah, of flow I, I because that's part of the direction. So yeah, trying to create more flow in your life. And so that might mean, um, you know, during the education phase, there are many different activities. There's the flow that for everybody, the flow flow cycle, the flow experience is like the optimal experience. So we, we should, you should have a lifestyle that, uh, you gets, gets you through those four phases, the restoration, the recovery, the like challenge, and then the flowing phase. So imagine if you could experience that in your daily life, um, that could be pretty amazing. So, uh, when, when, um, you know, and I think if we haven't, if the, the, if the population is intrinsically motivated, they would go through a period of education. Nurturing is, of course, very important. And then contribution is the number of years needed to produce. And then leisure, you basically don't have to work or you can continue to work when you're in the leisure phase of your life, depending upon, you know, whatever. And then with the coordination service, it's complex. Um, it's what's required, what roles are required, what tasks are required, um, what your qualifications are what you are intrinsically desire what you intrinsically want to do where you live what habitat you live in or maybe not a habitat maybe you're just dealing with information work and you can live anywhere in any habitat so um 
Yeah. So uh, you you wake up, then it's kind of depending upon you know how you want to live your daily life and how that how that society or how that habitat has organized work. Maybe in the contribution phase, um, there are different ways to do contribution, which I discuss in the next version. Um, you could do just con you could literally do just contribution like day after day with very few vacation days, maybe even no weekends, and then the number of working years you need to complete contribution work is is minimal because you've been so focused and the population feels like it's their national duty to do the work so it's a different in mentality so it depends so i'm trying to say it depends or, or you could have it more flexible like people work three days a week or people work 20 hours a week we could keep the same calendar or we could change the calendar you have to remember that our current calendar is set up what why is our current calendar even in existence i mean it's in existence because of the romans the western calendar that we use and then the work schedule you know why seven days you know of a week why five work you know, days with, with why so many hours with an efficient with an efficient city design um it's that's that's where my main focus has been um it's quite possible for five to ten percent of the people having a full-time job to actually produce abundance and abundant quality of life for the other 95 to 90 percent and currently the only solution is kind of what you're going to do with the 90 percent would then theoretically be unemployed unless we just you know create extra work by building casinos and prisons, which is what current society kind of does. Mm. But if you don't, because both are not really useful, but anyway, that's you know what kind of causes the other, but that's another story. Um, this is one part where there is theory. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um do you have this problem that well if 10% can produce wealth for you know abundant lifestyle for 90%. How do you pay the 90 for basically doing nothing? And then yeah. there's this whole UBI concept, et cetera, which leaves people a bit without a purpose. So there's got to be something fresh in between that really makes this work. That we've got to give a name and make popular. This is a psychological so, thing. Yeah, um, this yeah, is like some yeah, people yeah. see like, you know, I'm doing national service and you talk to them and they're like, I'm mm -hmm. going to serve my nation or I'm going, you know, this is something that we can, we this, this would, I think this is important because it, it shows a difference in orientation of society from uh, self-oriented to, um, you know, uh, other uh, others oriented during a period of time of your life where you're facilitating the fulfillment and that's totally psychological and that's totally can be changed through education yeah expectations education and because we don't necessarily have to convince 100 percent or 90 percent you can 